Okay, welcome to episode 8 of Cooking with the Doctor. Uh, this is your host James here. So today we're in for a special treat, a special uh, take on the ingredient challenge. So I challenge friends and family to give me a list of ingredients and that I would try to, in as few meals as possible, use all of the ingredients. Well, considering the list they gave me, I have figured I can make it all in one, one meal. So I'm going to quickly go through the ingredient list and then we'll get to uh, making the meal. So first on the list, proposed by my friend Scott, okay, I have here pork tenderloin. Okay. So that's going to be the main deal here. And then I just want to make sure I get these all correct. Right. Next, from my friend Cody, apple. Then, from my sister Rachel, I got pineapple. And with this, I you know bought pre-sliced pineapple. It was going to be way easier. I didn't want to spend half my prep time dealing with a pineapple. Okay. Then after that, we get. Brown. Yeah, we get sorry cinnamon from my sister Lindsay. Brown sugar from my friend Lee. Then we get garlic from my friend Sam. And then finally, my friend Josh proposed whiskey. So this will be using 1835 bourbon, Texas um, bourbon style whiskey. Okay, so. With all of this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a, a, a slow cook pork tenderloin. All right, so, first thing I am going to do is go ahead and deal with the apple. Please stay, don't fall. Okay, so with the apple, I already washed it. First thing I'm going to do is peel it and then I'm going to slice it. Okay, it's just going to be easier that way. So I got myself a peeler here. And the thing is, if you're going to be cooking with apples, especially if you're going to be doing like a long cook, like putting apples in the oven, you're going to want to peel them. Like if you're dicing it up for like, I don't know, a fruit salad or something, like it's kind of a whatever situation. But yeah, if you're going to be putting it in the oven, like using it in any sort of pie or roast anything like that yeah you're gonna want to peel this which is a little labor intensive it's a little annoying but trust me you do not want you do not want the apple skin okay once it's cooked because that that's gonna stay tough okay, whereas the rest of the apple is gonna soften up which is good that's idea And the skin's gonna stay tough and that's no good. Okay, almost there. So the peeling process. So I'm finishing the peeling here. What I did with the pineapple is I ended up uh, you know, buying canned sliced pineapple and I just simply drained a little bit of the juice out so you want to keep some of that, especially if you're putting any of it in storage. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to figure that out. So then, let's see here. Okay, almost done. Almost done. And, and, and trust me, even though you might be tempted to buy the pre-peeled apples, considering the price, it's worth like the minute or two that's going to take to peel the apple, as far as the money you're going to save. Okay, so we are now at the time for us getting ready to cut it up now. Now I'm not going to try any sort of fancy coring. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around the core. So, oh, 
careful also very careful with knives here okay. be very careful there and cut off a little bit of skins left right there do the same on the other side cut what little bit of skin is there and then go ahead and Get away from the core. That's important. It's the core we're just gonna not use, obviously. Okay, cutting a little bit of skin I didn't get before that maybe I should have. Let's get a little bit of what's here in the core, a little bit of that hardcore skin. Okay, so. These guys, I'm going to cut up into the, the side pieces, the, the pieces that were, you know, the last two I cut off from the core. I'm going to dice those into thirds. Right here. And then the others. Okay, what I'm going to do with these Is I'm going to dice these into fourths where the middle cut is clearly just straight down whereas the other two cuts you're trying to get at some angle you don't need to get it terribly close to a 45 degree angle just some angle in there so I was trying to get a little bit of skin that was right there and obviously watch your fingers that's always important no 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 sorry one second here cat control no nope, duchess no nope. Gotta stay away right now. Okay. So, we got our apples ready, and I'm actually gonna get a bowl out for them, so I just put them to the side. Right now. Do with those in a moment. Move this right here over to sink area okay so next what we're going to do is get our spices ready as I quickly wash my hands okay so with this okay the key thing is that we're going to have cinnamon ground sugar but I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne, okay? Because we're going to get that sweet and savory between the pork and between the pork and the different sugars, the different fruits, and brown sugar. I want to add a little bit of heat, though. Definitely want to add a little bit of heat to that. So, start off putting the cayenne in. And be careful with how much you're going to be using. I mean, don't get me wrong, like... You know, don't feel like you have to skimp, but don't go ridiculously hog wild, especially with the cinnamon and the cayenne in this situation, because with you cooking it, it is, okay, the fact that we're going to be slow cooking it, not just putting it at the end, means that it's going to be much, much uh, stronger. Okay, the spices are going to come out quite a bit stronger. Okay, I need to get plenty of that brown sugar. Yeah, let's get some more cinnamon in here. Hey, hey, sorry, one second. More cat control. Okay, this is a bigger tenderloin. Well, not bigger, but this is going to be a little over a pound, so i got to make sure I have plenty of spices here. To wrap around it. Oh, you get that from sure up again. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And just a little bit more of that cayenne. And what we're gonna do here then is 
when you get this mixed up, grab a fork out, just kind of mix this all together. Okay. That should be good. Oh, that should be good and mixed here. So now we're going to get kind of to the final parts of the prep stage. And we're getting there. We are definitely making some progress. Now we're going to be dealing with the pork tenderloin itself. All right, so with this, this is going to be a two-stage foil that I am going to be using. And actually, before I even get that part ready, you know what, let's get that back. I'm going to grab this guy to put the pork tenderloin in, just so that we get the rub on there nice and good. Okay, so going to be cutting here. Get this guy open. And this is not what we're going to be cooking it in. This is this kind of a prep, um, impromptu prep dish right here. Impromptu prep bowl. Well, let's get some of this going on. Oh yeah, get some of that rub. I was thinking about using a barbecue rub as well, because I have some barbecue seasoning, and maybe adding some of that to this, but I feel like, you know, it, it start getting a little too noisy at that point. And you really do have to worry about too many different spices. Because at that point, it's like, well, what do any of the individual spices bring to the table? You don't know. It's harder to tell. And there's no good rule of thumb. It's not like, oh, once you get more than four spices or five spices, it's bad. It's just be aware of having too many different spices going on in a given rub. So, especially if there's a bunch of loud spices. Loud being things like uh, cumin, cinnamon. I was thinking of putting some cumin in this. But then I was like, no, no. We already got the cinnamon, and I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be using cayenne and garlic. Which don't be wrong, like, you know, that that's very much an Indian dish, but then I'm also adding fruit here and sugars. And I just thought that would be a disservice. Okay, so this guy right here is about good to go. Yeah, he's he's sufficiently rubbed, so I'm gonna quickly move him away and I am going to wash my hands here okay, dry them off next one we do is I'm gonna get this guy right here and because of all the caramelization that's going on, and I don't want to clean the bottom of this pan, if you ever are annoyed, like ever annoyed by how your baking sheets just always get hard to get off food on them, well, see what I'm going to do right here. Come on, boil, work with me. And this aluminum foil, the son of a bitch. But I want to be covering, yeah, basically this whole thing right here. And this way, there's going to be very few drippings. Because you will uh, inevitably, somehow, the drippings will get onto the pan, okay? That's just unavoidable. But you're not going to get a lot of that heavy caramelization that would, that might otherwise ruin, or, get, or, or basically be really hard to get off these baking sheets. Okay, we got that. Next, I'm actually, let me get that fork into the garlic ahead of time. Okay, so we're gonna bring this guy back to right here. And what we're gonna start doing now is we're gonna start making a handful of incisions here. 
And this is where we're going to be putting the apples in this situation. And we're not going to be using all the apple that I just, that I had ready earlier. But we're definitely going to be using good parts. So make sure the decisions are decently deep. Like you don't want it to be super deep. But just decently deep. You don't want to necessarily cut all the way through. Okay, but what I'm going to do first with these incisions is before I put the apple in them, let me get a better view here. Okay, I'm actually going to put a little bit of garlic in each of these. Probably need to clean that. Oh, just, yeah, you know, let's get another fork. Cause it, no, this is that touch the pork there. You want to be sanitary here. So get a little bit of, yeah, get, and I, I, I'm using minced garlic here. You can use this straight up clothes, doesn't matter. This is to say, do not use garlic salt in this situation as a replacement for garlic. It's definitely not one of those situations. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna definitely work some garlic into these. So hopefully what's gonna happen is that the caramelization from the apples is going to help, uh, is going to, you know, kind of help soften and break down and sweeten up the garlic here, which I think will be a nice little effect. Working the garlic in a little bit more. All right. I'll get some garlic, more garlic on in a little bit, but next. Mm. Okay, get that. This one, let me get some. Let me get some thinner slices here, because I think that's what's going to work better. Okay, let me see here. Got any? Oh, this right here, perfect. Thinner slice, and yeah, I'm sorry, I'm kicking you off the island. I need a thinner slice right there, like you. you. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so maybe uh, one more, one more. Where are you gonna be? Yeah, right here. So yeah, you definitely kind of want to work the apple slices in right there. And let me wash my hands here because I'm about ready to grab some of the pineapple. The pineapple here, what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to place, well, and the great thing is you can break these up definitely. Placing some right here, some right here. Some right here and some right here. But what I'm going to do here, let me wash my hands one more time, is I want to keep those pineapples in place. I want to keep them from sliding. So I'm going to bust out the toothpicks in a moment here. And that is definitely going to help. Okay, with the pine, keeping the pineapples from just sliding off. Okay, and just toothpick for each part of them. Hey, cat, cat. Sorry, I need to get the cat. Hey, dude, come on. You know better. All right, and then one final toothpick. Get that apple worked in there, maybe it's a little bit more. Maybe it's a little deeper of a cut to get you in there good, buddy. Oh yeah, okay. So now, a few more things I'm gonna do. The next thing I'm gonna do is the whiskey. And the key thing is, I know it's gonna evaporate. I know it's gonna be no good. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of whiskey. Like we're talking maybe not even a half shot. It's worth and slowly, slowly, well actually here's what I'm going to do, is make an executive decision. See right here how we still have more of that left, more of this spice left. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to mix in the whiskey with that. Yep, I just did that. I'm going to stir it up. Then, what I'm actually going to do is I have, I'm going to bust out my sauce brush. Get some of that all over the top right there. I know it's going to be pouring over the side, that's fine. And you're going to work it up here. That's the great thing about this brush is I can just brush it all over right here. All right. And then the one final thing to do is just a little bit more on the garlic front. Just a little bit more. And this you can just kind of sprinkle about at this point. Okay, oh, come on, get down. Okay, so. That is, we're almost ready to put it in the oven. Almost. Hey, one second. Come on, dude. Away. I know you're interested in what's going on over here. Come on, buddy. Okay, so. One more use of the foil, and with this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sheet of foil, and we're basically, yeah, we're going to gently cover the roast. We want to be gentle because of the toothpicks. We don't want the toothpicks to be piercing this. I mean, it's not the end of the world if they do, but ideally they don't. Fill it over here, and then just over the edge right here. Okay, and then you back up there. So now what we're going to do is we're now going to set the oven to a really low temperature. We're going to set it to about 200 degrees, okay? So I'm going to set it to 200 degrees. And normally when you preheat an oven, you want to wait for it to be preheated before you put anything in. This situation, though, move it right back up here. In this situation, because we're going to be keeping it in for quite a few hours, we're talking in the neighborhood of at least four, possibly five, if not longer, hours. So, oh, but you can see Duchess right there in the background prowling. But uh, yeah, you can. We're going to be putting this in for at least four hours at two hundred, and after about the four hour mark, I'm going to check in on it. And then I'll even bring it out and show you guys. But then after that, I'm probably going to be upping the temperature for the next like half hour, hour up. Just up to like a 250, nothing crazy. But yeah, I kind of want to increase the temp there. So with that, I'm, I'm going to put this in the oven. And I am going to set the timer here. Like it. Oh, nice. I'm going to set the timer for four hours. Four hours is when I'm going to check in on it. Okay, so with that, I will see you guys in, yeah, I mean, about four hours I'll be checking in on it, and I'll show you guys the video at that point. Five hours later. So I'm back here. It's been right around, I'm actually going to just cancel the timer there at this point, uh, right around the four hour mark. So we're going to go ahead and pull out our product, pull out 
this for dinner and a wee bit, oh geez, that's citrus and apple and cinnamon smell, so good. So let's see what we got, oh, I'm gonna have to bring this a little close. You know what? I'm just gonna zoom in the camera here. Yeah, that's what we got going on. Okay, so, looking at this, it is looking really well. I'm gonna quickly take its temperature, okay? I took it a few, about an hour or so ago as well, but stick it in. Okay, and when you're taking temperature real quick, this is actually a real important kitchen tip, make sure they try to get to the middle of the cut of the meat, not to the, uh, too much to the top, too much to the bottom, because otherwise you're, you're gonna be reading it at too hot of a temperature. And you might risk undercooking. Okay, so I am currently here. I'll move this little piece of apple right back up here. Oh yeah. And okay, so we're getting a pretty decent rise here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do probably about uh probably put it up to about two fifty or so for about maybe another hour at this point. Okay, just looking at this because this is getting to about 130 internal temperature and we're getting some good caramelization over here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to get ready to put this up to 250. Let's do that. Yeah, I hear you, dude. And one quick second, I'm going to actually put a little surprise up on here. I'm going to get some butter. Why not? Okay, let me get... What I'm going to be using here is actually a cheese shredder. You guys are like, what are you doing, James? No, trust me, if you're looking to just have a nice, good, even coat of butter over something like I'm doing right now, take that refrigerated stick of butter, get you a cheese grater, and just grate on over. And that's what I'm gonna do at this point. It's a nice little butter coat. And I'll grate it just like it's a cheese. You don't want it too thick of a butter coating, just enough where you can be like, okay, No, no, get up on here. No, up. And that's what I'm working on here. Just getting a little nice butter coating, I think, will be fun. It'll be a fun little thing to have going on. Oh, I hear a dude, yeah, dude's prowling around on the counters. Well, cupboards, like up on top of the cupboards. Okay, so, got that figured out. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it back in. Okay, so I'm gonna cover it again. And this, you know, what I'm gonna do is put it in for another hour. Six months later. We are back now, and I am turning the oven off. Everything else is off, timer off. Nope, I'm not off timer. So, with this, I'm going to be pulling our tenderloin out. Just to let you know, at the final half hour or so, I had it uncovered. Allowed to get a little crispier. So, we're going to take a look here. Oh, yep, and I'm going to get some zooming in. Maybe even get it directed like this. Yeah. So you get that good apple, crisp apple, pineapple, garlic, spices, tenderloin. Oh, this is gonna be ridiculous. So so our total time, the prep time was about 
25, 30 minutes. The cook time ended up being total about five hours in the oven. So let me get a fork and a much larger knife to cut part of this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out at this point the different uh, toothpicks I had in to keep the pineapple good to go. And I'm going to cut a large portion, maybe give you guys a better shot here, cut a large portion here. Oh, looking through here, we got a good medium doneness. Okay. This and this and down here is what we have on the plate. Let's try not to drop it. Don't drop it. Okay, we should be good. It's a little fuzzy, but we should be fine. And we have the first few bites here on camera then we're gonna go off camera okay so it's got I want to get a little bit of pineapple a little bit of apple then obviously some of the pork so move it back up here no let's not have it so well zoomed okay mm. how's your hair That is sweet, spicy, savory. Mm. <coughs> Definitely some good spice between the cinnamon and the cayenne. But yeah, this, oh. Yes, this is absolutely excellent. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this on my own, and I'll have the video posted sometime tonight. So, you guys take care. Immediately right back, I realized one thing I should do, not just give you the, hey, this is a good review. Grades, okay. So the grade, uh, you know, Challenge rating, I thought this was a decent challenge rating. They gave me a bunch of different ingredients, though they did work together really nice. This wasn't, I mean, I needed a little bit of innovation. It wasn't like super, super creative. Like, so, still, as far as the results, the results are definitely a solid A result. And that's as far as concept and execution, both an A. So with that, I'm going to go back, enjoy the rest of this. You guys take care.